Okay. Uh, so this was my stage until a couple of weeks ago. Then this came in, and that's how it ended. So I blame it all on the container people. Now, actually, there's more. Uh, it's not only containers. So, but um, I'm thinking about introducing something which I called named multiple time domains. So what do the container people want? Um, they actually have a problem when they um, migrate containers from one machine to another because a clock monotonic on the target machine might be um, behind clock monotonic on the source which then breaks the guarantee that clock monotonics is never going backwards. So there's a surprise. Um, I can understand that, and um, so we need to do something about that. Uh, I don't want to, but yeah. <laughs> I can't make containers go away. So, or is there something we can do about that? <laughs> um, pardon? Chocolate with poison, great. Arndt, you have chocolate. <laughs> okay, five minutes from now, problem solved. <laughs> Okay, then uh, while we were discussing this, uh, somebody came up with NTP in containers. Hmm. Okay, so I was asking, why would you do that? Okay, the answer was there are people who want to use these totally broken Google NTP servers, while others want to use real NTP servers. <laughs> Actually, the Google NTP server is broken because it's mere sleep seconds, which then affects the underlying clock monotonic, which is not exposing nanoseconds anymore. So, but that's an accuracy pro problem, and Google doesn't care about that, and whatever. I don't, don't know why they have to smear the leap seconds, but let's not go there. Um, so the question is, and really, think hard about it. Is this a real use case or is this just a request for ponies? Because it's just in the we want ponies realm, we really want to avoid that. I explain it why later. So we have some other issues around that. TSN. Great. TSN spec says the clock, uh, grand clock master serves clock tie, which is tie, uh, time in uh, Atomic International, um, which is well defined. But then certain areas in the industry like automotive, industrial automation, and others came up with the brilliant idea, oh, we just take a random box and say, this is the grand clock monster, and it starts at the epoch. So what happens? Well, why can that, this go wrong? Uh, the way the kernel timekeeping works is that clock real time is an offset to clock monotonic, and it's coupled. So we adjust the frequency of clock monotonic with NTP in order to have proper time in, or a proper frequency adjustment for clock monotonic as well, which makes a lot of sense. But due to that, if the slave side boots first, and then the grand clock master starts distributing time and says, it's epoch now, so the slave side might be far enough up that we can't adjust the offset because then 
clock monotonic would become negative. Uh, we have a sanity check for that in, in the kernel. And so we recheck that, which breaks their use case. Um, yeah, I fear we can't do anything about that because they are going to want that. That's ponies as well. But this time we have to say, okay, you get kind of, kind of pony. Um, so what we need to do f in order to support that is basically distangle PTP um, time adjustment from uh, clock tie in some form and expose some kind of clock tie diluted. Actually, when the, the namespace people came in, I said, yeah, maybe I can abuse namespaces for that. Um, that actually might work. Wait, the PTP, oh, sorry. Um, the, the, the PTP code, as far as I know, in user space doesn't even use clock tie. It uses uh, clock real time and then adds the, the offset manually. Yeah, that's an implementation detail. Yeah. But, th but the problem is we still... Yes, the, the problem is the same. It, the problem I because just mean we expose clock tie through that. So yes. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. You need, need to have both clock tie and clock real time. Yeah, we so. And then we have industrial field buses, which is also interesting. Uh, they have something like pulse per second uh, time synchronization. Uh, but that frequency is something, the random cre fre frequen uh, crystal frequency of the day. So it's not giving you anything accurate in terms of nanoseconds. Uh, it's something. So, uh, but those people want to have this kind of exposed so they can have applications uh, access it and arm timers based on that on that uh, clock stuff. And we kind of support it with uh, the file descriptor based POSIX clocks, which are dynamically um, installed, but there's no way that we could ever expose them via VDSO. Uh. Why can't people just agree that a nanosecond is a nanosecond? So, if we think about time domain, so what could we do to address those problems? So, one is that the clock monotonic and boot time thing for containers is always reasonably easy to do, it's offsets. So, you basically, when you start to uh, migrate the container, you say, my offset for clock monotonic is X, and then you go. Um, there are a few things to do about that, uh, but we talk about that later. So then I might use the time domains to hide that diluted clock tie and also give the industrial people some access to their PPS diluted clock monotonic. So we could act actively make useful use of containers so until now, I never understood the concept behind containers, but actually now I start to like them because they allow me to hide crap. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I have to add crap in order to hide crap. <laughs> There's something wrong with that. So uh, let's talk about the ponies thing. Um, I thought about it for a very long time. So right now the update of the of the host of the only sane time domain on the system happens in the tick. So now I assume you have thousand time name spaces because container people think in that category so I've heard. Uh, and all want to have their particular offset because they're all special. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they make right. They make right every two seconds <coughs> to around whatever cluster, huge cluster, and everything is different. So great. 
Um, Share a thought about how to do that. Because you can't iterate thousands of namespaces in the timer tick because that would take to the next timer tick. So you would basically spend one CPU updating all time domains all the time. I mean, people might buy that, but I think it's not what they really want. Um, so what we can do, because on context which we know that the uh, I, I don't want to tie it to namespaces right now. I, I just say the time domain changes. We can easily access that because we have all the, the information. We have task, both previous and next tasks uh, cache hot. So it's, it shouldn't be that hard to figure that out. And then go there, OK, we, we, we switch the time domain and then just peek, is, it, is an update pending for that thing? If yes, go in there. That needs locking, but we have the locking on, on, on the regular uh, timer update as well, and we can compete on the lock. Uh, we try to avoid it. Um, so the first, um, after this period where we don't have to update, but when we go, go runnable again uh, with some user of that time domain, then this is going the guy who updates that thing and it's also good because the CPU time wasted for that is charged on that guy. So you're not, but the rest is context stealing and I hate it to do con long things, context stealing, which can't get accounted to those who, who requested it. Um, well, I have a, but if we go there, so uh, there are a lot of other things we can fix, but one thing, and I think the question didn't come up in the discussion on Alcom L, what about file timestamps? Good, good question. <laughs> yeah, I just want to ask it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect an answer. <laughs> oh, yes, you might care. So, if we so, so there's a patch that uh, was posted as an RFC, uh, and it was okay. Uh, some things I didn't really like, especially in the video server. So what we really want to do if we go there is just have a poor date, uh, poor time domain, video O data mapping, which we then which we then get with the context switch because it's tied to that process which runs in that time domain. Um, so we don't have domain lookups in that, in that area, which is horrible performance-wise. And we, we would have to do the domain lookup even for the regular use case where we don't use time domains. It, to, in order to figure out that we don't have a time domain or we are in the root time domain. So HR timers, uh, so the patch that fixed all the call sites and to, to address the namespacey thing, we, should, we don't want to do that. We want to provide an interface where we can say, start uh, HR timer namespace over here. And then this does the right thing. So, and we have all that crap in one central place because what's going to happen if we do that at the, at the, um, at the Cisco uh, level where we form those timers, then this is going to be copied over from one Cisco to the other and then um, modified and everything is differently broken and we don't want to go there. So really, please, if, if you look at that again, make that um, uh, a core infrastructure thing. Change all the callers we have now, which are affected by that, to that new interface, which is no <coughs> functional change in the first place. And then we can add the time domain stuff in there. So now, this is all the easy part. Uh, file timestamps, device timestamps, and proc. Proc is doable, I think. 
by some definition. Uh, device timestamps, that's a lot of manual in inspection required. The problem with the device timestamps is that the timestamps are taken in contexts which have no clue about the namespace. Interrupt, soft interrupt, whatever. So, and then we have interfaces which expose that information to user space. But whether the user space cares about that, we don't know, but we can't change the semantics of that. So we ha you have to go to those interfaces at the syscall level and, and do the correction into my random time domain. So input is one of the places. Mo most applications won't care right. because they just look at the delta. But do we know? Well, sockets are the big one, I think. Pardon? Socket timestamps are the, the big Socket one. Socket timestamps. Uh, socket, but socket timestamps are clock real time, right? No, sock. Ah, yes, they are clock real time. Yes. Yeah. So if we don't have the pony thing, we don't have to worry about that. Correct. So, so audio. Uh, and and then we and don't have to worry about file timestamps either. Correct. Yes. So only so audio, video for Linux, DRM, uh, input. Yeah. So, so talk to Orange. He knows all the places because he's fixing them for uh, uh, 2038. Okay. So he, he's, the, he's the guy who knows all that. So, so we can't emulate, uh, have a container emulating that it is, you know, traveling at 0.5C. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to actually travel that fast. <laughs> I, I guess I, I want to say from what, what I've heard in discussions and stuff, length of, uh, of the second varying is probably, um, it's quite possible, probably po ponies, but um, actually th there may be somebody who wants to mess with clock real time. Um, yeah, I mean, I was in a talk this week where I saw, yeah. oh, we want capabilities including uh, sys, what it's, uh, sys time or something. Yeah, that's but the yeah, yeah, that's the problem because we only um, if you adjust it in in one container, um, it affects everybody else um, or something like that. And we're, we're wondering, do we want, do we care um, if if the length of the second is a system wide parameter? Yeah, I mean, you, if we only have one, then you should have it on the host and yeah. not let containers mess with it. And, and the answer is the only use case we could think of it for it was testing, and if that's the only use case, I don't think we want to do it. Right, if, if, if there's real testing, the only use case for it, then let, let us spare the, 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 the horrors. Yeah, yeah, so we agree. Yeah. Did you just agree with containers people, or is that the poison chocolate speaking? <laughs> Damn, that poison thing didn't work. <laughs> so, um, I think uh, the, the, the time domains, whether we tie them to <coughs> namespaces or have something else which is less horrible to work with for the automation people, but I think when those folks who run diluted Thai uh, <laughs> grand clock masters, they should be punished by being forced to use containers. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else, yeah. what people want from time to time? <laughs> <laughs> or, or you're all, all happy with our timekeeping. That's great, I haven't heard that I'm in a while. Late. <laughs> Missed out, okay. The other one that I was thinking might be a little problematic is the relationship between clock monotonic and clock monotonic uh, raw. And so we may have to do some more work to make sure the yeah, monotonic raw is also 
you know, doesn't go backwards or, you know, that. So, and that's a little messier too, so. Yeah, clock monotonic raw might be a problem, but on the other hand, clock monotonic raw, yeah, it's, it's raw. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I mean, real Do we ones. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so, Did so we make that guarantee somewhere? I made it for myself. Are you made something up, and now uh, you're imposing it on me? Yeah. <laughs> so so let's let's be realistic here. Um, if the use case is container migration, um, it's unlikely that you can actually migrate in under a second, um, and so you may be able to fudge clock monotonic raw. <laughs> yeah, it's still. It's it is the same problem as monotonic. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's it's the same same yeah. problem. We need we need it. We need. Oh, yeah, yeah, but actually, I think you can just solve it with an offset. That's why I'm yeah. saying. No, you we can't, because if <coughs> it's not going to be this. Yes, we can just add another offset. That works. But actually, if clock monotonic <laughs> raw. It's going to be a diff between <coughs> two machines, depending on how the TSC or whatever is the underlying clock source uh, is clocked. It might have a different uh, conversion factor. That that means the correlation between raw and real monotonic is not longer the same, but. Yeah. Uh, no, we are not going to correct that. <laughs> yeah. so Is anyone going to care, right, yeah. or notice? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, but but that's a that that use case where where people start. That's where you really have to correlate hardware. Yeah, I, I, it's mostly just the aspect of the relationship between them is connected to kind of the NTP state. And right. so if we're saying, well, we're not really caring about the NTP oh, state, right. but then these values, but. Yeah. So, uh, so if we all agree that NT, NTP and containers is a really, really bad idea, then yeah. I'm so happy. I, I'm not convinced about the monotonic draw though. So the, the problem is right now the state is half the time after migration, uh, clock monotonic goes backwards. And we can definitely detect that and people get very angry and we're trying to fix it. If we fix monotonic and we make monotonic raw almost work, then it will probably work like 99 percent of the time, but it's still sometimes broken, and people won't know that it's broken. No, I mean, if we, if we fix it with the offset, that is that is perfectly doable. Thomas, and yeah, if we're not running NTP in the container, can you just set monotonic and monotonic raw to be the same value? In in the container, yeah. It, it would have to be the same before and after the migration. Yes. That that would work. Yes. That so we c we could do that if we, if you go into your own time domain and say make this a property of the of the of the namespace and say uh, fake monotonic raw yeah. and we we just let you read out monotonic. Yeah, we'd have to then hide the NTP state as well. Pardon? We need to hide the NTP state as well, so that yeah, nobody has inconsistent yeah. views of what. Yeah, yeah. So no, the, yeah. the only, the only, the only uh, ones who are allowed to to look at NTP state is root, right, on the root domain. Yeah. So nobody else. Yeah. So we just mm -hmm. say you're in namespace, go away. <laughs> or you just return zero. Yeah. You don't need to fail it. That might break. Yeah, we can just we can just give them what they asked for, random. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they want to do random things, then we can't give them random things. So, so it's easy. We're happy to to serve you that. No, uh, we can return zero, of course. Um, okay, anything else? What might break? What people care about? Well, I care about. I'm going to now have to have my VDSO be different between processes. At the moment, I have a pair of completely shared pages across the system. We all have that. So stop whining. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard.
No, it's annoying. It's more crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know that. But you don't have something working again which removes containers from the kernel? So do you have a plan? Oh, you have a plan. <laughs> Art has a plan. The, uh, do we actually do migration with VDSO? Does that work correctly if the VDSO is from a different kernel version and all that? So w would, would the solution be just to have no VDSO in migration? <laughs> in Creo, we try to handle this situation. If we just uh, see VDSO with different offsets for uh, library calls, like get time of day and so on, we just uh, create a VDCO proxy and we have just jumped to the right function in, in a new VDCO. So we don't know how to do this properly, <laughs> so we use this hack. It just works for us, but... So, so you could equally, in, in that case, have a, a fake VDSO that calls the system call so Ben doesn't have to do his per process VDSO, right? So uh, we can call exec and we will have a new process with the default VDCO, but the time should be synchronous between process, what we can do th in this case. Uh, the uh, VDSO uh, shim uh, doesn't survive yes. exec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, so, yeah, that's... I let, I know that, and that's the reason why you need the the the, the separate poor time domain VDSO mapping, which you, well, because that 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 goes goes through exec fork whatever that that works. No, I mean I would love to let it keep all that in user space, but I didn't come up with a solution which really works. Uh, the, the per namespace, VDSO. <laughs> but that, that you just no, need a second VDSO that doesn't do anything, right? Space. So the, you just need a second VDSO That's version that is trivial by not doing any of that magic, just jumping into the kernel or not providing any symbols <laughs> so that the exec process has to fall back to using the yeah, system but call. That's, that's Uh, oh, 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 that was the secret plan to get containers removed because they become so slow that nobody wants to use them anymore. <laughs> Great! <laughs> Why didn't I come up with that? Uh, it, well, I mean, there's another question here, which is, do you really think you want to uh, include in your uh, use cases for containers those user space programs that want to call get time of day 100 times, you know, 100,000 times a second? Yes. <laughs> well, then, th then if they want time domains, they may suffer, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yes. Yeah, we look into that option with uh, redirecting everything into the kernel and handle it in the kernel interfaces. So just to please Ben. <laughs> you can do that yourself. Yeah. I, I really <laughs> and, uh, we have to go back to executable stacks and all that crap. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, the VDSO me needs to be there. Yeah. So, uh, you, you, so the, the thing is, you only you do not you do only need a data mapping, not the code. The code stays the same. Yeah. So you what I would probably do is split it into three pages. One remains global, and one becomes per time domain because there's still some global stuff in there. There's other things in our videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I would basically create three different map mappings instead of two. Yeah, I mean that, mm. that works. So yeah, we, we should, that should be doable. I looked at it in, a, in x86. Could it's actually come in handy for other things. I mean, if we start having per process videos or pages, there's other things we could put in there that could be yeah. useful. Right. as well, things like NUMA nodes and things like this. Yeah. Uh, but NUMA nodes difficult because that's... Yeah, I, I think a lot of people wanted that for a long time and we, we refused. Well, NUMA, NUMA is, in, is problematic because it's per thread. 
it's not per address space. But other th there are other things we could potentially use that. But, uh, yeah, so. So, and it's, we all agree that this is process wide. It's not going to be, uh, my task A, my thread A is in time name space one and my no. thread B is no. in time frame <laughs> space two. I mean, I'm just asking to make sure that we are all on the same page. I know what container people dream about. <laughs> now, is that a zombie pony? No, no way. <laughs> Some namespaces are per task, but it's not a problem to 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 to, to make it um, um, per per process because there's very little benefit to be per task. Okay, thank you very much. Because that would be funny. <laughs> Especially the VDSO mapping wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, this is my ignorance, but do you, what's the interface to set the offset for namespace? We use clock set time, so we create a new namespace, then use clock set time, clock monotonic, and just specify the current value for this clock, oh, oh, and oh, just oh. calculate this offset in the kernel. <laughs> and no. and what, what is wrong with this approach? Uh, no, clock monotonic is not settable. Period. End of story. No, we are not in, going to. In, no, 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 <laughs> no. I don't want to see. If I'm the magic container, then I'm allowed to set clock monotonic. No, <laughs> it's not going in. So, what's your suggestion for setting the offset? Uh, so, what, when you create that namespace. So you know that you have an offset. So why don't you feed it into the namespace creation? Because it doesn't have any arguments. We have it's set ns or clone <coughs> in the namespace. Uh, okay, but then please yeah. let let us come up with a set with a separate dedicated interface for that and not abuse clock set time. Yeah. I and really hate it. You can do a sys file. Oh, yeah, and, and if we yeah, needed to, we could even do a sys call ideas. to create the time namespace. Um, it does. We don't have to have have to use clone or unshare bits. It's just convenient. Um, what? What is convenient? You, 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 using you, using bits of clone or unshare, um, so, aka the thing that gives us no arguments. Okay. Um, but if you do that, you'll confuse all the user space to I mean, the user space tools will all have to be taught specially about this. Well, they're like going to have to learn about. And <laughs> well, but they have to learn about time name spaces anyway. Yeah. So I mean, so, so I really don't want to give people ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, horrible enough that we have an interface which is allows you to f f fiddle with uh, with clock monotonic and and boot time and whatever. Um, No. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, something which we actually can tie to namespace. I don't know what. Yeah. Ca no idea. I don't even know where that namespace stuff is living, but I don't want to know either. <laughs> uh, so, I, oh, that's one of the directories I avoid. Um, no. Uh, we've sorted something out, but we want to make it separate. So it's entirely clear this is something which is tied to a name to the namespace functionality, and not if we do that in the core clock set time interface, then we have the request for oh, if I'm something else than a time namespace, then I can do that as well because I'm special as well. So no, we want a dedicated interface which is solely for containers. That's fair. Okay. I didn't throw that one. No. I guess one other question you're gonna have to ask with this dedicated interface is, what if someone tries to set the monotonic clock within a namespace, then tries to set it again, possibly to backwards? Set once. 
it said once. Um, it's caveat emptor. If you do something stupid, you get stupid results. <laughs> no, it said once because um, you really have to do it before arming the first timer. If if you if you do that after you arm the first timer, you're toast. Well, what about timers with well, so that's going to be one of the problems, right, which is if you're doing container migration and you have to somehow move the timers, right, that's going to have to be done manually, which is the other way that you could do this is you could say, all right, you can use clock set time once and only before you have ever called clock get time or set a timer. The moment you do that, you can no longer touch clock monotonic, right? So if you've never observed clock monotonic, then you get to set it. Um, but otherwise, you can't. Right? But that would be the we other. We don't pack. know about that because the video, the video server doesn't tell oh, whether you, we accessed it. Yeah, right. You're screwed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean, if the if the application uses clock get time, yeah. and then does clock set time, and then forgets about it that it did clock set time, and is confused because clock yeah, monotonic yeah. went backwards. Oh, okay, who cares? <laughs> So, so I mean, th this is a special yeah. uh, 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 <clears throat> mechanism you have for that container migration right. setup, restoring, whatever yeah. thingy, and 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 they should know what what they are doing, right. and if they don't, they get what they ask for. <laughs> so, anything else? Sure. If if you want to restrict the functionality, wouldn't it make sense to? Make sure that you can only call it at clone time and not yeah, any that's time else. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be the nicest thing. Yeah. Which makes it a standard namespace. You could just not map the DDN token until it's set. If they try to access the DDN token before it's set, then the namespace needs to say. No, 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 that complicates things. Because after, after you create the namespace, you just basically say, no, the, the you thing have is, to set the it. thing is, when I cr when you create a time namespace, then we create the VDSO data for it, which is the time new time domain, and then this gets the the non shared the non global part of the VDSO data. Yes, and then. Um, because you don't want to go there and fix up the videos O mapping after the fact. No, it has to be available when the when the when the process store, uh, when the process runs. Okay. So when it, when, when you create the, 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 when you fork, and it, you you have to establish the namespace before that, I think, right? Where it's part of part of fork. Uh -oh. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, so once the namespace is created, we 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 create the VDSO, and and when the task is brought up, it just gets that map. We we can avoid the problem fairly easily if we decide that we have good use for having a per process page in the VDSO anyway. Uh, and if that's the case, then we always create that third page, and we just have to update it. Yes. Uh, so, th and that sort of makes the problem simpler. Yeah, we don't we have to fiddle with mappings. We don't yeah, have to. We we can do that. So yeah, that's an Im that's a detail we we, we have yeah, to think yeah. about. What I'm worried, um, what what I'm worried is that right now the. The data we have for VDSO access is is packed, and um, it's it's really optimized for uh, in the cache lines for fast access to clock fast. The fastest accessor is clock monotonic, I think. Uh, clock real time is slightly slower because you touch a second a second cache line for that. Um, so, but then with the with the offset thing you. Actually, if that's a separate page, you get a third page line into the uh, cache line into the play, which is 4K a, a part of the other one. For 64 for us. Yeah, that's a good point because part of the problem is going to be that uh, 
the process, the shared page cannot tell you whether you're in a time domain or not. Right. So you have to go look at the third page for that. Uh, and so yes, you add a, you add a second cache line to every uh, clock call in the system, mm. which is so annoying. So one one way to solve that would be uh, I need a, I need that whiteboard thingy. Yeah. So you so you make sure you have the the two pages. One is the global <coughs> state, and 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 this is the process part. So if we place the data structure so it overlaps and be clever about it we only touch two, two cache lines and it's two consecutive cache lines and two TLB entries you have two TLB entries anyway so, so you have to dice some death <laughs> so now the, the other variant would be <coughs> that we used only a single data page and have some clever update mechanism which would be tied to uh, schedule in or something like that. Yeah. So everybody would have a private page and that replicates the yes. information the process, the process, including those who are not. And, and, only, and we only look at that when we switch Times, uh, uh, time domains on context switch. Well, whenever we update, we have to update everybody. Yeah, you don't do it. No, no, why? I don't. It's got private copies of the page if we shove it in the wrong page. You've got to be private for everybody, including the non time domain processes. We need to go over the page. Well, so if you update the scale factor for No, 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 you have a, you have a global page per time domain. So you have only one. So, so we have the, when the system starts, <coughs> we have the time domain zero. Right, but you just killed Ben's idea of doing a complete per process page thing. That's what you want. Okay. Yeah. No, no, they denied it's not going to work. Yeah. No, even that, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. No, you uh, even can do the copy on yeah. the per process thing. It's not a, not a problem. So I just wanted because to make Because on switch to, you just look at whether you change namespace from previous to next. And then next goes and looks whether his own process wide VDSO page is up to date. And then if it's not, it goes there and updates it. If, is, if it's up to date, go on and have fun. So I just want everyone to know that it's just coming up on 445, so if you wanted to go to some other talk, that it is time. There's nothing else here, so if people want to keep having the design conversation, that's great. I just want to make sure people knew that if they wanted to go to the other referee track, that we're sort of at the time, end of the time slot. But otherwise, feel free to keep going. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, I think we have enough ideas now. We have. We know where all the pain Sorry. points are. Everybody can go back and think about it, and Ben can dream up nice things without TLBs and whatever. Oh, that's right. Okay, I so magic pages, uh, self-replicating magic pages. <laughs> oh, we need that. Uh, it would be cute. Um, so thank you, everybody, for being here. and. Uh, helping with the discussion and giving me that warm, fuzzy feeling that we don't need NTP in containers. Yay! Yes. <laughs>